Hello, my darlings. Welcome to another episode of Bougie Best Friend. In today's episode, I'm sitting down with my friend Lisa Gilmore. Her and I are on a roll. We've been recording a bunch of episodes together, and it's just so much fun to record with a friend and just talk all things girl topic. In today's episode, we talked a lot about physical appearance and comparing ourselves and things that we do, like beauty treatments, things we would never do, and just like things men will never understand. So without further ado, let's dive into the episode. As always, please make sure to leave a five-star rating and a review if you're enjoying the podcast and leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of episodes you like. Let me know what you want to see. And I'm going on vacation tomorrow and I'm so excited. This is my first vacation in 2024. So I am just pump and high five. (laughs) Have a beautiful day. Okay. Hello. I'm having a day already. Same. (laughs) Why are you having a day? I'm having a... I'm just frustrated. Why are you frustrated? I... There's just some things that... I feel like people are just not getting shit done. Okay. And it seems like nobody wants to work these days. <laughs> literally, Kim K was right. It seems like you just have to get your ass up and work. But, you know, enough about me. <laughs> How are you doing? I am not well. Yeah, what's going on? I'm on my third day of being so fucking hungover. Oh, that kind of To the point where like I swear I never I never want to see alcohol again in my life. And I always say this, but I mean it this time. Okay. Because here's the thing, right? Number one, I never drink really anymore. And if I do, I have like... Never see you with a cocktail. No, I I mean, no, I do drink. (laughs) I do drink. But I I have like one or two drinks. Yeah. And I feel great. And it hits me and I'm happy. And I go home and that's it. Okay? And I have a little headache after two drinks because that's what being 30 is like. Mm -hmm. But also because I don't drink anymore... And I don't even drink sugary things either. Whatever. Friday, just one thing. You know those days that it's just like you don't have plans. It's just vibes. And then like things just happen and whatever. Just like one thing after the other. And I had so much fun. I didn't even do anything crazy. Although I will say I am such a liability with my phone when I have alcohol in me. Because I just like, you know, you just want to talk to men, right? I don't anymore. I just drink with my man, but all right. Okay, but Let's my get, single remember, girlies will understand. Like when you're, that phase. when it's you're, like when sending you're sending a selfie, and you're like, should not be sending that selfie. I just like I d- and I didn't like get into too many things that I shouldn't have, but still. Anyway, so I had way too many drinks on Friday, even though I didn't do anything crazy. But I just had way too many drinks, and Saturday I woke up and I literally felt like a truck ran me over. And Did it was something like happen specifically. No, no, like I just. I just had too many drinks oh. and my body's not used to it. I literally um. feel like I poisoned myself. I also didn't eat at all. And does Where this happen go? does this happen to you like when you start drinking? See, this doesn't happen to me anymore, but like when you start drinking, you're just like not thinking about food. Like you're just like you know what I mean? Yeah. I you, you didn't prepare your body for that kind of at night. all. Yeah. Like whatsoever. So it was one of those hangovers that I was like, oh, oh, I'm gonna feel hungover for like five days. Where did you go? fucking everywhere like I started I had a business meeting in Brickle and it was like a 4 p.m business meeting and I was like I kind of would love a cocktail yeah I thought we were gonna get coffee but then we both decided to have a drink and then I somehow had two drinks and then I met my friends for like a quick little dinner before they they had like this event and one of my other friends came and then her and I ended up going somewhere else after and then we went somewhere else and then thank god one of my I mean not thank god but one of my friends was like I need you something was happening and that was like thank god that happened because then I was like I'm on my way and then I left but I left and I was drunk and mm-hmm. I got to her house and we like problem solved and then I went home at like 1 a.m. and I had hiccups all the way home. And if she had an issue, then did you guys continue drinking or you didn't? No, 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 no. I stopped. I went home to her. I went to her house and like helped her and then I went home. But then still like the next day I was, I was like, about to say I thought that like you guys went like all in. No, bro, at went. all. Like it was so chill. That's the thing. Like that's yeah. also why I'm like. You're just, just like, surprised why you're taking this so. Like why did I, you yeah. know, and it's like here's my thing and I don't want to keep talking about this but anxiety is so Mm. real like the I'm already an anxious person alcohol is not good for me even though I love it so much when I drink too much the next day it's not even like the physical hangover but it's like the moral hangover even if I did nothing wrong I'm just my nervous system is heightened it's all fucked up I feel like everybody hates me even though nobody hates me I love you thank you but you know what I mean it's like I know and then I start to I just yeah yeah I was so 
mean to myself yesterday because I'm like, why do you do this if you know it's going to make you feel bad? And then I'm like, holy shit. How many, I'm sorry, how many drinks did you have? Like four or five. I mean, that's that's like not... It's a lot for you me. Wouldn't be, you wouldn't you, be... You're not like expecting that you're going to feel like shit after like three, four or five drinks. I just was like yesterday, I was like, stop being so mean to yourself. You never do this. You let loose. It just happened. It was one of those nights. It just happened nothing catastrophic happened Yo, now when you, i saw you i thought that's like something catastrophic no 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 <laughs> i wouldn't no 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 but i honestly like i feel awful you like, won't believe this actually when we were preparing to record i was about to send you a text of, p- of potential topics mm-hmm. and i mentioned alcohol but i was like oh i'm not even gonna send her a list because i was getting ready i'm like i'll just see her yeah and yeah talk yeah. To her. yeah what are we gonna talk about today uh, we're gonna talk about i mean i do like the topic of alcohol i feel like I don't know if I want to talk about alcohol today. You don't have to talk too a little much trickery. about alcohol. You might, you might like. I'm too some sensitive sickness. right now. But I will say that I don't. Okay, I used to be a drinker. Like I would drink every weekend. I would meet up with my friends. We would have to get a bottle of wine or two, or I would, you know, go out and I would get a vodka soda or five. And I that was like a big part of my twenties. And I thought I'm never going to stop. And also I did so many embarrassing things when I was drunk and the anxiety you're describing, I felt it many, many times. And you know what happened? Why I, and I was getting blacked out. Like I would even go to events and I would, the first thing I would do is go to the bar, like get a drink. Now I go to an event, I get a water or sure I'll get a wine. I'm not pretending like I'm like not drinking anymore, but that's not even in my like my focus shifted so much before when i would go to events and like meeting people and whatever it was more like fun like let's do something fun let's go from this place to that place and that place and i'll tell you one moment that actually totally changed my approach to alcohol i was super hungover on a random i don't know wednesday and i had a work meeting in the morning and somebody was coming to me with a business idea proposition whatever like it was a big deal i felt so sick during that entire meeting it was a lunch meeting i did not eat Mm -hmm. i was like well i'm just not feeling well i think i had a coffee and like the person was eating and i just felt like such a idiot i'm like this is you this this last night whatever i don't even know where i was again it was so insignificant you almost like you did not show up as your best self yeah you showed up fucking hungover to a really important meeting yeah i was just like if you don't get your act together you will just be a drunk not a drunk i never had like that kind of issue but you you're just gonna be like one of those girls who just like people call to go out and like party and go to a a nightclub and in my 20s and when i moved to miami i was that girl that you would text like oh where's the best party tonight people who lived in miami would text me and I'm like, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm good at this, I guess. But I just decided that that's not the life I want. So nowadays, sure, I'll have a bottle of wine with you and like we can chill and whatever. But yeah. I'm not going to go to a bar and rip shots. Yeah, no, my outlook on it has changed so much. And I feel like, you know, I love letting people do whatever they want if they want to drink if they don't want to drink i don't care at all what anybody does i just want people to think about how they want to feel and i don't enjoy how feeling did, this okay, way let's talk about this how did that make you feel like this entire weekend well here's that's but that's the thing right like i've done a lot of work on myself to where it's it's i can look at things twofold so i'm like okay i don't like how i feel obviously physically i was horizontal for 24 hours I don't, yeah, showed up today. I don't, I don't, like I don't like feeling useless. Like yeah. I literally hate not being able to do my routines to do my work on my to do list. I don't like feeling like a useless loaf on the couch. I really don't enjoy that. So in that sense, obviously I don't like that. And then mentally I beat myself up because I'm like, wow, you're being so useless. And I'm like, it makes me anxious because like just chemically it does. Right. But then the other part of me has to be like, okay. Like the big sister in me has to be like, stop being so mean to yourself. You had so much fun. I bonded with my friends all night. I never do things like, like I never drink that much. I was, I was literally like, I wasn't at clubs. I was in a restaurant that went to another restaurant. Yeah. I'm behaving. I texted we're a few like men that I maybe shouldn't have, but I texted <laughs> them and they're so lucky to see my name on their phone. <laughs> I literally did nothing wrong, you know? Yeah. 
so that's where I'm like, I have to be compassionate as well. Like I never do shit like that. Yeah, I know my limits now. Like I know what's going to make me feel good. And I know how much I can drink to where the next day it's going to upset me. Mm -hmm. And I cross that line. So that's why I'm like, I'm so annoyed at you. Like, why did you do that? You know? But then I'm also like, Sometimes I just have to live, and I yeah. did, and now I have to live with the consequences. I think you're definitely too hard to. Uh, no, I know, yourself. but like, the fact that it's Monday and I still feel bad. Yeah. Like physically, I feel yeah. bad, and so therefore mentally, I also feel bad. That's what it. It does not fly with me anymore. Like I can't do shit like that. Yeah. You know, to where it's affecting my work week like that. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, I just totally. You know, relate to that. I have to say, when I was going through like a breakup or something dramatic, I would go out and i would drink so heavily that because i didn't have anything to come home to like i was so sad and i was just like drowning my sorrows away and now when i remember that girl i, I like feel bad for yeah. her I'm like you're and nowadays when i see girls constantly and i don't want to be like oh, oh now i'm rec now i'm healed so, but i'm like the pe people who go out and get fucked up week after week or day after day like what are you escaping from like you're doing something like i know that i was it looked so fun on the outside yeah. but like i would get fucked up because i was like i that's that's all i have right now i yeah. was so miserable but then when you work on yourself you start realizing that that's not the way to do it but you mentioned something important texting men when you are <laughs> drinking for our single girlies do you have any advice on how to Don't do it. not to do that or <laughs> should you do it or like what's your because I again in my single days I remember when I was like texting dudes that I was like hooking up with at the time it never ended well yeah you know you sure maybe you like meet them and you hang out whatever but I have a lot of self-control I will say I say this now obviously maybe a few years ago my answer to this would have been so different but now it really happens rarely and I just think about, I really do think about, like, how am I going to feel about this tomorrow? I don't want to do things. Again, because I'm such an anxious human, I know how something like that could make me feel if I, like, cross a line or if I say something that maybe I'm like, I shouldn't say this, they don't deserve me, whatever the, the reason might be. I'm like, I just don't want to suffer tomorrow. So that's how I gauge what I do. I'm like, is this going to make me upset me if, like, it doesn't go my way or if I don't get the response I want or whatever it is? Also, I just, like, I love flirting. Like, mm -hmm. I flirt with you are flirt. anyone and everyone. Like, with a parent, you know? Like, I... A parent? A, a, a dad? No, literally. I'll flirt with anybody. It's, like, it's, I don't even mean to... It's just, it's fun. <laughs> I don't even mean to. It's just fun, you know? And so I guess my answer to your question is, like, let's think about the damage control ahead of time. Like, how are you going to feel about this tomorrow? But, but, but listen, you're being too rational. When you're, like, drinking yeah. and you're Well, because I'm not... Like, see, I'm not, like, hammered at yeah, anymore. Facts. So I'm, like, a little buzz, and I'm like, oh, let's just see what this person's up to, mm -hmm. you know? I remember once I was out. I was still living in New York. And you know that time when you're, like, going out and you're, like, drunk FaceTiming your friends? Yeah. I call this one girl that I used to always go out with, and she didn't go out that night. She was so rude to me. So she didn't pick up. And then she sent me a text. Don't ever. F f first of all, this girl, sh she was just a party friend. She's not like a real okay, party yeah. friend. Like she's, she, has, she has been canceled for a long time. But what she said to me then, what she said to me at that time, she was like, don't you ever fucking call me like that in the middle of the night. I was sleeping and I have such hard time sleeping. Oh, wow. First of all. Put your phone on silent. Don't disturb mode. Like, why don't you? Yeah, that's your fault. Yeah. And, and I, <laughs> she had. And for, I was, like, in the middle of a party and, like, getting a text like that. I was like, okay, never fucking calling you again. That's so mean, It's though. like I wasn't. There's a way to say it. She could have been like, hey, I yeah. love you. I hope you're having a yeah. good time. But, like, I was asleep. First of all, she was, that, she was a friend that I would, like, go out with till 7 a.m. So like, Also, put your phone you, on silent. Yeah. I don't understand people who don't have their phone on silent. I traveled with her once. That was, I, I, you know how you, we talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, how you change your opinion yeah. of people after you travel that with happened. them. But that, that girl was, I was just like, who are you? But anyway, uh, how do we stop drunk? How do we FaceTiming, calling people if you just maybe are going to regret it tomorrow? I think, you know, sometimes this is one of those things where it's like, once you do it enough, to where it humiliates you so much you never want to do it again True. like because because you don't know how bad it's gonna make you feel until you do it 
and so our suggestion is just do, do it, it and then you're gonna like feel shit. so bad about it and then you never do it again no i'm just kidding i just honestly i just think about it but again i feel like you have i think sometimes like you have to pay your dues with these things and you have to like you do to shit learn. and fuck up because maybe yeah. you're a type of person like i have friends that it doesn't even it literally rolls off their back like if they do something embarrassing they're just like who cares yeah. i'm not that person like i yeah i care way too much yeah it also depends on what kind of single era I'm in. Like, right now I'm in a very, like, I'm a slut in theory, but not in practice. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like, Are you having sex? I just said I'm a slut in theory, but not in practice. Okay, I was about to say, I haven't heard any, like, sex No, no, that, so that's what I'm well. saying. Like, I'm, very, I'm being very wholesome right now. Not exactly by choice. I just, like, uh-huh. I'm not attracted to anybody in mm-hmm. this moment. Actually, that's a lie. I have two crushes, but, like... Oh, what a weird sex thing, then. It's time. very, um just like old, old you know flings, flings. Uh, like safe see that's the thing you gotta have like your safe people because like mm-hmm. the two men that i texted they're like safe to me like i know they're not gonna make me feel bad yeah. i don't really care that sounds awful <laughs> i just know that like regardless of what happens it's gonna be fine yeah. do you know what i mean like yeah. i have certain people where like for example my two guys from last year i would never you know, I like was about to say, that I he was would no, 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 that would be bad. If I texted them, I would be, I would be so embarrassed. Uh, anyway, I don't. Can we switch subjects? I'm yeah, sure. I was right just now. thinking about what can we talk about? Things men will never understand. So it can be as simple as finding a new highlighter that you're like, oh my god, this fucking hits. To like finding being it. scared to walk at night. To like the unproblematic energy of pinterest i mean they guys would never understand of how much work we put into our appearance like the treatments that i've done the ones i regretted the one i would never do again how about let's do that let's do things you would never do again getting injectables with somebody that you either don't know their work you don't it's almost like a blind date and they're like injecting shit in your face yeah no that happened to me way too many times there was even a time when i was like completely dissolving my lips and refilling them and it was a whole thing and i'm the type of person that's gonna try everything which is a good and a bad thing i'm like yeah i'll just do it like if there's five people oh who wants to try this new filler i'm like i'll do it and and just hope for the best and i've seen that that sometimes that's not the way to go especially with fillers Mm -hmm. and i mean even with toxins it's like if you get if you get injected i okay i don't know if you remember this you probably don't nobody really noticed noticed this besides me i got a neurotoxin in my chin people always say botox but botox is just a brand so i always like to say don't use the word botox but there was a neurotoxin that was injected in my chin that completely fucked up my smile oh my and the reason why i wanted to inject it in my chin is because one of my like when i'm speaking obviously your face it moves in different directions yeah. and there was this one little tiny piece of my part of my lip that i didn't like the way it like totally unnecessary so I injected some shit at here in my chin and then my smile was like like this, like cringing. I will show you this after this no, I've conversation. Seen, I've seen like not Botox, but what is it? Tox- so neurotoxin. OK, I will educate you real quick. Yeah, I always just say but I know it's different, but I just say Botox because it's like Botox, Dysport, Zeom and Daxify. They all do the same thing. OK, they just have a different formula. Okay. So it's almost like your highlighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rare beauty. This. So beauty. what do you call the their like mother? What's their like neurotoxin? Neurotoxin. That's Botulinum, okay. Botulinum toxin. I'm not gonna remember that. Yeah, it's okay. Neurotoxin. Just say tox. 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 That's okay. why Botox is the the first one. So they, because the 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 I don't know exactly, but like the 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 main thing, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. main ingredient is botulinum toxin. So their name is Botox because of they just like played on words with the ingredient. Got it. But then you had all these other brands that came out with theirs. So like Doxifies, Peptide Power. So Zeom you did and, yeah. Tox in your chin or you did filler? Tox. Okay. And I it, mean, I did filler in my chin too, but this is what I'm ta- saying that really fucked up my smile is that so like for girls thinking do chin Botox or Tox or whatever, don't. Just you know, don't. You know what I had to lear- learn the hard way? I'm in a very complicated relationship with tox, with mm-hmm. Botox, what, with toxins right now because I love them. Same. I'm like, fill it the fuck up. However, the last few times I've gotten it done, I, the last time I got it done, my girl was amazing, loved her. But the, all the times before the, then, I don't know if it's my face, I don't know if it's my brows, I don't know what it is, but 
the way that it lifts my eyebrows makes me look makes me look insane. Like She's it just not doing it right. But it's like it's been a lot of different people that are good people. So I'm like, I wonder if it's some things don't work for everybody. So like I think you just have to say like do not So with my, my last eyebrows. girl, I was like, please, I told her I was like, my eyes have been looking insane. Like after I do Botox, like uh, one or two weeks after, you know when it hits? Mm -hmm. Bro, the, best. the way, no, no, no. The way that it was hitting for me, I was looking like insane. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I thought I was supposed to like this. I don't like yeah. the way I look right now. And the thing about that is you can't do anything. You have to just let That's, it. Yeah. I That's was the worst. One. I was ice rolling the shit out of my face, massaging it, doing everything to try to get it to mm -hmm. like evaporate yeah, yeah. faster. And I think people don't realize that like there is such a thing as too much talks in the wrong place talks and if you overdo it, you can't just go in and get it dissolved, which like they need to make some, they need to, I mean, I think your invent something. should do a better job of this, this, this claiming that. And also if you're somebody who's just starting with injectables, just like do little and then do, you can always yeah, come back after by two little. weeks. There was another girl who once injected, uh, it was like a foxy eye trend. And oh, I was I've like, done threads. Oh, I never did that. Okay, oh my God, bro. Like, this lady put so much Botox or top, whatever the fuck she put in my <laughs> what kind of talks i looked sad i actually genuinely we need to insert picture i, I think have i have i i was so traumatized for some of these that i don't but and she told me i came back to like fix it and i was like and we were looking at the before and after she's like you wanted this you wanted the foxy i'm like this is not a foxy i look this looks like i'm sad this looks like you did something to me that was like uncomfortable which it actually was let me tell you she about me let me tell you about threads because i'm like you in the sense where i'm like if something is available, reversible, <laughs> no. If it's reversible or dissolvable, I'll yeah. try it. Yeah. Okay. This was my mindset kind of a few years ago. Now I'm a lot more reluctant because I've just seen what my face can look like when I don't like it and I don't want to feel that again. But I went to this doctor in Costa Rica and he was like, oh, let's lift up your eyes. Let's, I always get filler in my nose because I have a little bump that I don't like. So I get filler, which I love. I yeah, always do that. I and I, I actually need to do it again, but they just fill in a bump and then they lift up the tip. It's crazy what mm -hmm. people can do with filler. Hella painful, but it's, it's amazing. And he was like, okay, let's do a liquid nose job, but I'm going to do it with threads. And then I'm also going to put threads here. So we lift up, you know, and get this like Bella Hadid snatched mm. look. And I was like, down, let's do it, bro. It is fucking insane the way like seeing this like needle with a thread in Oof. your nose and they're like moving shit around threads. i don't know how oh my i have videos of when he was putting it in my eyes here obviously i'm numb i can't even look at those videos like it was insane and i looked insane after so would you recommend threads i wouldn't do it again i just wouldn't i feel like it was so expensive it was painful I, I have a high pain, pain tolerance, but it was painful not only in the moment, but days after you felt, I felt like you, you just need to go to somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing with anything. Yeah. Like, I think you also have to be clear with your expectations yeah. and show a photo of what you want because some people love that fake look and some people want to look, I mean, look at the housewives. Like yeah, yeah, they yeah. want that snatched look and so people see that they got work done, but some people don't like that. The amount of times I've had my lips dissolved. Oof. I can't I had even it tell once you. Only. And I think I'm going to do it again because I also don't like how, you know how sometimes you don't see it when you're wearing makeup, yeah. but sometimes like when they try the to bubbles. define this like vermilion border, which actually just makes it look so overfilled. Mm -hmm. But I, I decided that I'm going to stop messing around with my face. Same. I'm like, less I'm, is so much more yeah. for me because I've tried things and it doesn't look good on me. Yeah. Like my lips, thank God I love my girl that does them now. Because I, I feel like they look natural. They don't look... I feel like it yeah. looks fine for my face. But it it's taken me... I, I'm telling you, the amount of times I've dissolved my lips, because I've gone to great places, but I just... I'm like, it doesn't look good on me. Yeah. Like, it doesn't... It might not even be their technique. No, it's no. Just it's just like what they did yeah. doesn't work with you. I have right. a friend. I mean, I have a friend who got her nose done. Her nose looks... Like a rhinoplasty? Yeah. Her nose looks beautiful. Like, I low-key want one so bad. <laughs> But she is telling, like, she's been very upset about it for the longest time because she looks at herself, she's like, this just doesn't look like me. And that's how I felt with my cheek fillers. I'm like, this just doesn't look like the person that I'm used to seeing in the mirror. And she 
was also like going through therapy about yeah. like other things but also about that and it's like because sometimes you think that this one thing is gonna help your self-esteem or I it's know. gonna help you in, in whatever way once i do this actually, then i'm gonna feel beautiful yeah i mean i do feel beautiful with my lips done with my my talks and my i mean i'm okay with the cheek fillers right now but i think you look gorgeous right now i didn't thanks. see you right after but i remember seeing a video when you had just done it on tiktok and i but you said like i literally just left the office they yeah. look a little swollen they looked a little swollen yeah, yeah, but i, I haven't seen you since then i'll show you photos uh, but I, now i think it looks beautiful yeah now they're good but i mean it is just be careful with the all the injectables and i just think it's really hard to not get carried away yeah. of wanting different things like this episode is brought to you by hat baby we are in the middle of summer and you know what that means. Traveling, memories, cocktails, laughter, jumping in the water and spending way too much time in a wet bikini. Wet bikinis are a big no-no and that may be the reason you're getting vaginal infections this summer. It creates a warm, damp place for building germs and bacteria to turn into bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections. And not to mention the wet bikini smell isn't really appealing. So just remember, change out of that bikini ASAP. Your vaginal pH can get imbalanced for so many reasons and one of the best ways to keep it in check and improve your vag health gut health and overall health is by taking happy v's prebiotic and probiotic they're unlike anything else on the market and it's a female founded company where the founder herself was battling with bb for over five years and she finally found something that worked for her and decided to bring it to all of us which i'm so grateful for their prebiotic probiotic can not only minimize current bb symptoms but also prevent future infections so if you feel like you're smelling a bit off down there or you feel some kind of itch or discomfort Comfort, happy V is there to help you feel healthy and happy. Give them a try by heading over to happyv.com. That's happy V, V is in vagina.com. Happy V.com. So, what we are concluding here is to live a healthy, li healthy lifestyle I, is the way to go. I mean, I do whatever you want. Just know, I think you said it best do whatever you want, but have clear expectations. Mm -hmm of what that might look like not even just when you get it done but years later i will tell you i was i mean i'm in good shape right now a few months back i was like in excellent shape right now it's like summer i'm kind of chilling but i just see how much you change your perception of your body when you consistently go to the gym yeah you don't even have to go to the gym do whatever you like what kind of workout you like but you just feel so much stronger finding a workout that you actually like is a game changer really i don't is. like pilates i don't like <laughs> when i when somebody invites me to a pilates class You're like no i'm like respectfully yeah no a spin class hate it i'm okay with yoga but you have to find what you like yeah you you and when you find a workout that you like you're gonna actually be excited to go there yeah and i mean i just wish people find whatever they like because i know I'm, s I'm struggling with this because i was such a worker outer like for years it was my life like my days were good or bad depending on did i go to my workout classes but that's also like a little aggressive no no for sure i took it too far which is why i'm at where i'm at yeah. now which i'm doing a lot better now but it ruined it for me like i just started to i, I needed a full break i started to resent the workouts that i loved so much and now I'm at a place where I'm like, I've gotten so used to not doing it, mm -hmm. but also I love walking. So that's the only thing I do, which is fine. I and like I've given though. myself the pass because I know that I needed a second. I know that I needed to work on my relationship with my body. I know I needed to work on my relationship with food, with exercise. Like I know I needed a moment to work on these things because it was not healthy. So I gave myself a pass, however, I feel like right now I'm in the space where I'm like, I would kind of like to start working out again. I would kind of like to find some new class that I like. I would like to find a new studio that I like, but I think I'm What's stopping you. I think I'm just like, I'm in a comfort zone. I'm uncomfortable. Don't sweat for 40 with me. I'm on, I'm uncomfortable to go somewhere, be so bad at it. That's my ego. Cause I was so good at my workouts mm. that I used to do because I would go fucking twice a day. Of course I'm going to be good at it. I don't want to suck. I feel like I'm going to be so bad. You know what? Okay. It's just like the it's I excuses. It's literally just excuses. I know a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't want to be like silly on the on the floor. I'm like, 
if this is my first time here, yeah, I should be silly. Like yeah. if, if I'm doing an incorrect job, I like if I want them to fix my posture. I want them to do it. I hate when I go to a class. This is honestly maybe the reason why I stopped going to any Pilates classes. Because first of all, if I had a boob job, I can't do some things that other people can do. So if yep. I have to modify my workouts, you have to tell me like right. before the class. And that's what a lot of trainers don't do. They don't ask who has a, any kind of injury or anything that they should be mindful of. You can't do all the workouts and then you're going to hurt yourself. It but happened like, to me that I hurt, literally hurt my, like my boob was like popping out. If you were in a class and there were men, in, men, men there as well. And at the beginning, the instructor was like, raise your hand. If anybody has, would you be like, I have my titties done? Facts. You would? Of course. Oh my God, I wouldn't. I would be, I would be so like, embarrassed. Have... If it was just women, I would. Oh no, no, no. But I'm if like, there were men, I'm not going to like. You know what happens also said for 40, you have <laughs> like, you have specific days. Like when it's yeah, upper I've done body, it lower before. body. Yeah. And sometimes they have like a something for arms or like push-ups like i got a boob job i can't do this yeah and then give me a different i just have no shame yeah in admitting that i'm bad at something because no, me, i'm I don't, willing to learn i am too it's i'm just too hard on myself that's yeah. it I, why? that's literally and also while you were saying about like your relationship with your food and your body i know we talked about this before but i'm just so fascinated when pretty girls like you and i'm sure a lot of girls listening to this when you think that you're not like a 10 I mean, I think I'm pretty great, but I you think, are. yeah, it's like, how do people even get into this mindset of like, let me just look at myself and think and just point out everything that is not perfect about me. I mean, I do that sometimes for sure. No, I think it's so much, it's, it's so layered. And I think for me, it was like, I don't know, it was 18, 19. Like it's, well, I'm, I'm still paying for things that happened then. You know what I mean? And I feel so much better now. Like, my mindset is 180. What helped you? Therapy. Okay, for somebody who doesn't want to do therapy, what can they do? I mean, what's the issue? That's It's so situational, you know? Okay, I get a lot of messages where girls are like, I'm not hot enough to have a guy like that or something. Oof. And then I'm also like, okay, if you're not, if you're let's say that you are not hot enough. Okay. Let's put it down. Let's write it down. Yeah. Your wardrobe is not elevated. Your, um, I don't know, your hair is not the right color. Whatever. R list it all out. And then go one by one and start resolving the issue. Like, I don't like this about me. Okay, so then why don't you fix it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Why don't you do yeah. something about it? It really bothers me when people are just like, I hate my job. I hate this. No, I agree. I hate, like, well, speak I'm very, up. I feel like you and I are the same in that way. We're very solution oriented. Yes. If someone comes to me with something, I'm my my response to them, I might show the empathy first, but in my head I'm always like, like a minute of empathy. <laughs> I, I'll be like, what can we do? Exactly. Like I'm always like, what can we do? How do you solve it? I don't like to just like sit and dwell. I'm yeah. like, okay, what what needs to happen? Yeah. And if I'm sitting and dwelling, it's on my own shit. And yeah. I'm you know, I'm the one keeping myself there and I know I'm doing it. Yeah. But I think Like I I mean, I get so many DMs and I'm trying to like be nice to The girls always but sometimes it's just like oh i'm with this man and he's treating me like this and i do this and i'm like but what are you doing there anymore yeah. like why are you still just like people have no ownership of their own issues and it's like i think a big a big thing as well is and i would have this conversation with my therapist a lot is the root of so many of my issues at least it was two things but one of them that we worked on a lot is the topic of self-worth. That is a, that is something that I feel like a lot of women don't have figured out. And I think it's a process. Like I'm always going to be working on it. Me personally, I'm always going to have to be feeding that and like really doing things that I know help me remember my worth and strengthen how I feel and whatever. Right. But I think that's People are trying to fix this kind of this shit at the top. Like, oh, let me, you know, I'm going to look pretty for him and do this and that. And it's like, until we get the mindset right, mm -hmm. all that shit is not going to make a difference in the long run. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think until you, can do you it simultaneously. Totally, totally. Yeah. And that's what you, that's what should happen. Yeah. But the mindset is when they're asking you the question, it's already the wrong question, right? It's yeah. like, he's doing this to me and, or whatever you're saying, like, he's mm -hmm. treating me this way. What do I do? It's like, why are why do you think you deserve that yeah that's 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 something that's that, the problem i mean even think of your 
or mine old relationships you're like now when you look at it with a clear mind it's like how the fuck was i ever there speaking of traumas and like battles with whatever i always wanted to be a model growing up you could be not at that time and that's and th- that's where my self-worth and my self-image started to like go down because i would go to these i was a hair model so i was like okay second second place kind of because i wasn't tall enough and i wasn't skinny enough and my teeth weren't straight enough and i would just go to these i wasn't going to that many castings but i mean at that time in croatia you don't really have like a modeling mecca yeah but when i would go they're like oh you're not tall enough or like you are not skinny enough somebody can say one sentence to you and that can like label you for life but that's what i'm saying to you is when you're like how does this happen to a girl like you it's like it it can only take one comment that someone says to you once in fifth grade enough to start a spiral to then you start looking at okay how do i fix this one thing then you go down this rabbit hole of okay let me fix that one thing and then you realize oh wait i need to fix this one too and then wait that's not good enough and then and then before you know it you're in this like hole of always feeling like it's never enough and the problem is it won't be enough until you decide it is also living in miami you really you see very attractive fit people everywhere everywhere every day and it really like it can either motivate you to start working out and like be the best version of yourself or it can start going to like the comparison route like oh look at all of them and i don't look like that and why do i look like that and it's i try to i've tried to lately exist in a space in between those two where i'm just neutral where i'm like wow i think she's so beautiful it has nothing to do with me do you know what i mean like i don't i don't want to do physical labor right now so i'm not inclined but i think you're killing it do you know what i mean like that's where i'm kind of existing right now yeah and it's taken so much work and i have days where i'm like fuck my ass does not look like that airpod you said you know what i mean (laughs) i want to talk about clothing for a second okay um i have a lot of clothes right now and i feel like i'm constantly redefining refining my closet and cleaning things out but i still have so much shit that i do not wear yeah and i don't know what to do with it even i have so many winter like winter jackets and you know because i'm like okay well wes's family's in chicago i'll need a jacket one time yeah you need a few but it's just I see, you know what I want to buy, what I want to invest in? What, a stylist? That, that definitely, but <laughs> before a stylist, just finding high quality, everyday staples. staples, like a capsule wardrobe, like give me a nice white t-shirt. Yeah. Please, ju- can, can I just get a... I feel like you have a top? nice like capsule wardrobe, you don't think so? I, I have it, but it's not where I want it to be. Okay, I feel the same way. I totally cut down on trends, like yeah. I don't do any... any me either. I'm so over anything that doesn't feel like me. The best moment, one of the best moments in my life was when I finally accepted that I don't like certain things, don't don't have to like certain things. I think I always felt bad because I'm a very casual person and that means something different to everybody. I think I'm a very casual person. I don't enjoy like putting on tight little dresses with big ass heels. I don't like shit like that. I never did. I love looking at women and like, I love when women dress up and wear whatever the fuck they want. I literally don't Mm -hmm. care, but I don't like that. I don't like little frilly things and skirts. And it's just not what I like. I sometimes barely own a skirt. Yeah. It's just not my, it's for my friends because they're like, you never wear a skirt. Yeah. It's not my style. I dabble, you know, but it's not my style. And I would always feel so bad about it, especially Same. in college. I was in a sorority and that stuff. We had these, I had a great experience, but we had these like events, these formals, right? And everybody had to wear little dresses and heels. And it, Coco, when I tell you the anxiety this would give me because I didn't feel good about myself or my mm. body. And I was like, fuck, I can't, like, I can't put on jeans. I can't wear, but like, I literally can't. It's not in the yeah. dress code. Yeah. It would drive me insane. And now, I don't care if I'm going to be the one who's underdressed. I don't care if I'm not going to look You're the same. You're always put together, so it doesn't really No, thank you, thank you. But I think it's just, you know when you have a belief and so therefore it feels larger in your head, even though mm-hmm. to other people they don't even realize it. But to me, I always feel like I'm not going to be the one who's, you know, super dressed up or 
wearing like the girliest of things, which again, that term means somebody to something different to everybody. And now I'm like, when I feel comfortable, I am my best fucking self. So I don't even care yeah. anymore. Because you're going to get such a different version of me if I show up somewhere where I don't feel so cute. True. I'd rather not go, to be honest with you. If I don't feel if I don't feel hot, I'm canceling. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm gonna be late. So whenever you cancel, and I, I hate know that's being it. late. Yeah. Like you yeah. know, I for some reason had a bunch of polka dots at some point in my life. A I bunch of what? Polka. Oh polka my dots. god! No way. How do I fucking pronounce that? Yeah, yeah. Polka, polka dots. dots. Yeah. I don't know why. T-shirts and yeah. like random shit that just doesn't fit me at all. Knowing what looks good on you is i wish i learned that faster yeah nobody teaches us that in school you but know what you need colors. to you need to get colors but also you need to get i, I hope wear i hope everybody has like a friend that is brutally honest to the point where it kind of sometimes might hurt your feelings but at the same time it's so helpful you know what i also don't think you always need a brutally honest friend i think you need to find a fashion girly like an instagram fashion looks like you yes has like your, your, your body, body type shape. Your height. This is such your good hair advice. Color. Because if I'm posting something and I'm blonde and you are a brunette, like maybe the same thing is not going to look, whatever it might do, but. The body type, I think, yeah. is the most important. The height also. Yeah. Like Follow if, people if you're trying to get. You I know, mean, I think whoever's listening to this, they're trying to be like the best version of themselves. Yeah. I think something that helped me a lot was, especially when I was healing my relationship with my body, was diversifying who I was following and the kinds of bodies and outfits that I was looking at because I was still stuck in this pursuit of just ultimate thinness you know and I was looking at these bodies that no matter what I would do I'm not going to look that way because we have completely different bodies Mm -hmm. and it really helped me in those years to just understand there are so many different bodies and it's okay if mine doesn't look the way you know what's so funny? That way, you know? I, first of all, to compare, to, to put a parallel to your body comment, it's like when a flower looks at another flower. They don't think like, oh, this flower is not me. It's yeah. like, they just bloom. Yeah. They just blossom. I know, I know. But something I saw recently on Instagram or something, and, you know, all these girlies are like fashion, uh, office outfit of the day, what I wore to the outfit, uh, to the office today. And this girl was like, why don't you take actual advice for from people who actually work in an office because you're following these influencers oh who don't even go to an office go to an office oh they're just doing like inspo yeah but you can wear that to an office yeah yeah, you can't show up wearing certain things especially if you work in like super corporate you can't totally express yourself all the time yeah with your clothing if you work at a very sterile environment it just doesn't work like that do you get dressed every day when you're at home no you don't i wish I wish. What do you wear? I really do wish. I mean, I I mean, I get dressed. I wear like leggings and like I always have like a cute set on. Okay, so but I don't do my hair, my makeup, which no. I really want to start. I really want to start doing because I see how it changes the way I act. Even if I do like a, a bun like this, and just I don't know, put perfume and like put a yeah. mascara. Like mascara changes my vibe. My skin. I mean, my skin is pretty okay. But just like putting in those five, 10 minutes to get myself ready, I, and then I get more creative. That's I true. I create content. I create, like, I have a list of things that I always want to create, like yeah. videos and whatever. And I don't, I don't schedule actual content days when I'm filming it. I just film as I go. But if I'm dressed up, I'm going to do this video. And if I'm not, I'll, I'll maybe do it. I'm like, oh, I don't look great. So maybe I shouldn't post it. But then I also remember that one of my best performing videos is just me and my sweats. So I'm like, man, give me something here. Like, I need to figure out what works best. But I see that I show up differently when I am at least, like, when I put body lotion, I don't know what happens. She's a CEO. I feel like I... (laughs) Shit's getting done. It's a warm hug. I always say that. Putting body lotion on your body. Just, like, you know, tell your body thank you. It's We don't do that enough. And when people ask, like, why is skincare and self-care so important? It's because you're reconnecting with yourself. And you're, like, literally nurturing yourself. Yeah, I spoil myself. I'm not going to lie. I really, like... What do you do? Like, okay, how do you... Okay, you wake... What time you wake up? 7, 7.15. I'm not going to lie. Today I woke up at 8 because I am brutally hungover. (laughs) 
<laughs> but I wanted to say one thing that my friend Melissa, she gave me this tip. And I almost fell to the floor when she said this to me because I was like, that's insane. She works from home as well. She was like, my new rule is I have to wear pants every day. And I only let myself wear sweatpants once a week. And I was like, pants in your own home? Like, that's crazy. That is a bit crazy. And I've adopted. What does she do? I have a, she works from home. She does YouTube content creation. Also content. She's also a mother. Um, she's the cutest baby boy. But I have adopted this. And now I feel weird when I wear sweatpants in my house. Maybe we should go shopping. Now I feel weird when I put sweatpants in my house. I'm like, wow, I'm being lazy today. Mm, and so, like sometimes I'll put, I always wear jeans or pants. I never wore shoes. Jeans. Ah. I used to have a no shoe policy in my home, but I, I don't, don't anymore. With that. Okay. So I, I wear I'll shoes. I don't care. Mm -hmm. And I usually always just bun my hair because it's easier. And then I always, if I'm not going to do makeup, I'll always do my brows. And even just putting shoes on, it's something in my brain clicks and it's like, okay, time to go. Do you know what I mean? Let's talk about shoes in the house. As a Croatian person, that is an actual crime. Really? If you come into my home and wear shoes, I feel like you're disrespecting my home. Just kidding. But my, oh, man, I know, I know. my man is American. He's like, when I'm on conference calls, when I'm like doing shit, I need shoes. Yeah, I'm like, I, see, I, I don't need it. I understand him though. So yeah, we you, have to be a middle. We have to have a compromise. I, when I see him, even maybe his shoes are not even dirty, but just when I see him, first of all, when I have guests over, I'm not gonna tell them to take yeah, off their yeah, shoes. Yeah. But like, if you live with me, yeah, like, there's no reason for you to wear shoes every single day. And then you go outside and you step into in pee, and why are you doing that? But from an American side, please explain why is that so normal and common in American households in general? I actually have no idea. But did you like, notice that? I have no clue because I've never liked shoes inside. You know, and when I go somewhere, I'm always so careful. Like, do you yeah. want me to take, I always ask. Like, do you want me to take my shoes yeah. off? Like, I'm, you know, I just. In Croatia, you have like a slipper box. Yeah. And you give people slippers as they come. <laughs> I mean, I feel like in Costa Rica too, like, mo we're, I always had slippers on. We always all yeah. uh, all had slippers we're on. We're like a full slipper kind of vibe. Yeah. And I wore slippers in my house too, but I think just because of how good it makes me feel when I do have shoes on, and I'm always like just on the go, so I, I've eliminated that rule, but also I'm careful. Like I don't have this like big rug where I'm stepping over it. If I do, I skip. I don't step on my rug with my shoes on. Like I also try to be careful. I clean my house like a maniac, so. Yeah. Yeah. But in general, I think that in american culture it's more common yeah to, to just have your shoes, shoes on yeah and for me like let's say you have a baby and yeah, your baby no, is absolutely crawling not. all over absolutely and not but then how like i'm but just see, trying the rules, to understand the rules will change when that okay. happens but like with rocky do you clean his paws every time you take him outside i used to i did it at the beginning with ollie and then i didn't like for two it's months. the same thing yeah he he is literally walking on piss i know he steps into his own bee all the time we were, I mean, Wes and I were saying like it's Rocky the same thing. could not survive in the wild because yeah. he steps into his pee and then he leaves a tr trail. Yeah, like they would attack him. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. If he was in the jungle yeah. or something. Oh, I loved this like mishmash of everything we got into today. Yeah, I'm happy that we didn't plan anything because sometimes it's like nice. I think when. I think I'm, I'm learning with us when when we plan it, it's not necessary to plan it. You know what I learned? I am not a planner. I in, am in life and you always have to have a planner yeah. in the relationship. So like you did plan yeah. the location, you booked it and yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish that I am. It's okay. Not everybody's meant to be a planner. And I think you need to know what, what strengths yeah. you have. Yeah. Uh, I'm an executor. Yeah. 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 Just give me a task and I'll get it done. I will not get it done the way you want. It right. But to you're going to get it done. Love you. Yeah, love, love this. You too. What else? Anxiety. Uh, hopefully it's solved by now. Does this conversation make you feel better? I do feel a little. I physically don't feel well, but, yeah. you know. Maybe a little sauna. Mentally we'll help. get there soon. Okay. But I love this. And let us know what hit here and we'll elaborate because yeah. God knows we can elaborate. I'm sure it, there's a lot of hitting points yeah. here. So Okay. Let us know. That's a wrap. Bye. Bye. Bougie Bestie, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to subscribe to my podcast so you never miss out. I release new episodes every Friday. If you love Bougie Best Friend, please leave a five-star rating and a review. Your support means the world and it helps the show grow. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Coco Beauty. And you can find Bougie Best Friend on Apple, Spotify, and all other major podcasting platforms. Love you. Bye.